Okay, plan is to start yet another Raspberry Pi project, but this time with Software Defined Radio. To the Raspberry Pi bin. This is where I keep my Pies, and this should be what I think is a 3B Plus, maybe? It's one of the new style without the spring-loaded SD card, so it should have Wi-Fi on board, hopefully. Uh, these are older ones without Wi-Fi, and that's a really old one. But we don't want to use a Pi 4. They're too darn expensive. So we're going to give this a go. Nifty little setup. The image is all, all done for you. Uh, I didn't have to configure anything, but there's a pass like right now. So I'm gonna go move this upstairs. sure whether I showed these on the channel before, these SMD magazines. So I'm getting ready to do the soldering on the new boards of the Disky project. And it's kind of hard to handle surface mount components on a good day. They're kind of unruly. Like here's an 0805, which is a big SMD got away. So I broke out my old 3D printed ones here. I found out that the LEDs are too big to fit in this style. So I re-downloaded uh, a larger one and I think we'll make some magazines. They're super handy to have. Load them up and leave them on the shelf. And when you come back to your project, well, you just pull up on the plastic uh, backing and it actually dispenses them out and you can pick them off. And yeah, nothing to it. Just some cheap PLA 3D printer filament and we should have the ones that will fit the LEDs. Ordered some long spools of these too in case I go into some fab of these boards. And a fresh nozzle in the printer gives us, ah, look at those, just awesome. This thing always prints awesome with a fresh nozzle. <laughs> uh, I should change them more often. They do get a little bit of clogging, so uh, I could go a little lower. That's fine. Ha, perfect. And to close these out, these finally work just perfect for the two millimeter gap. And now we can run our thick LEDs through here just perfectly. The idea being the components can slide through, but we get our tail for our wrapper here and we can just pull on it and they just feed right out. So now we're all set. Now we have some for LEDs and then just add them to the rack. Still one of my favorite tools in the lab. Just awesome for things like this. We'll label these up and it'll be just great. There we go. Now we have enough left over with our previous two and our two new ones. All I have to do is print a new stand and we have a whole extra ready to go. Pretty cool. So this is the Pi setup as it sits, Raspberry Pi, the TerraTech software defined radio, and then this coax goes out to my QFH antenna in my attic. I featured that QFH antenna on the channel here in a video like a decade ago. I'll try and remember, post a link. Since I had the Nano VNA out today, I realized I never did get around to making a case for it. So I went on Thingiverse real quick and sure enough, found a case and off we go to make it. Okie dokie, GoPro stop time lapse. Let's see, pretty cool. I think those will do the job. As long as they fit, we should be all set. I should mention, Vector Network Analyzer just allows us to see the physics of an antenna and how it reacts with the world around it. The thing we'll be most interested in, and I guess I'll just show it, we'll just do it live. Uh, we're going to look at the return loss of the antenna that I have and the SWR and see if we can debug what's going on with my Raspberry Pi setup. There, 
I actually ended up reprinting this. It's actually a super, super snug fit. The original designer did such a good job that uh, any extra material was causing uh, some distortion and making the touchscreen not work correctly. But we're good to go. Now it has a nice nifty little case and our touchscreen works. And yeah, we're all set. Let's use this to actually measure an antenna. Okay, what we've got is a Raspberry Pi here, our software-defined radio dongle, out to my QFH antenna. My QFH is actually just up in the attic. We'll go ahead and set it up for the correct frequency that we want. We want 137 megahertz. 100 megs of bandwidth. I've already calibrated the unit at 137 for approximately this spread, so we should be in good shape. So we'll go ahead and change the display. I uh, will get rid of trace one, change channel zero, the purple display over to SWR because well, people will be familiar with standing wave ratio, but we're going to care about the log mag. I swear some of these measurements, uh, the log mag is our return loss and I almost wonder whether some of these measurements are set up to be deliberately a little bit confusing for newcomers. Uh, it's like a Darmok and Jalad type thing. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. I remember the words, but I don't understand. But the return loss is how much energy we have going out that doesn't come back. Okay, so what I've got is poor images on the NOAA weather sats, but Meteor is working pretty good. So I don't suspect my antenna is the problem, but I thought I'd check. Our center at 137 megahertz. We're showing our return loss at about minus 17 dB. That means we're pretty good on the antenna, but there's a nice little dip right afterwards. And if we move up to that, we're in the neighborhood of minus 29 dB. That's really good. So I'm suspecting my cal is just a little off here, or the antenna could be a little off too. But uh, that's really good. Um, so anyway, we're in pretty good shape here. The antenna is working. Uh, we're at about 50 ohm, and uh, yeah, everything is hunky dory. So I don't think my antenna is my problem here. Uh, we can go ahead and try some more things. SDR is still unsuccessful even with uh, some additions. So what I did is I added the Sawbird low noise amplifier and bandpass filter. This filters out all the frequencies around 137 megahertz and amplifies the signal. I have a DC block on here because we need one for this SDR powered from the Pi. Everything is working out to our antenna, but Meteor works fine. Uh, Noah, not so much. So we're going to try a new SDR. Alrighty. Rihan, this order is for you. If you're new here, you might not know I make kits for the videos that I produce for some of the components. In this case, it's ESP8266 and a passive infrared sensor. And they're just linked at the bottom of the videos, and I use the money from these kits to uh, fund more videos. So we'll send Rahan uh, some Starburst and a cool PCB Way ruler. Thanks for your order. All my kit PCBs are from PCBWay.com. You can make your own there, or you can also do pre-made designs that they published on their website from other makers and have them made as well. Anything that interests you and make your own projects or kits yourself. Just finished a mailbag. You guys can check out the mailbag videos over on Patreon if you're into electronics parts and stuff. Uh, right now I've been posting a new mailbag every week for my patrons. So they're over there and you can see the entire history. So I got this multifunction tester from Banggood. It turned out it was dead on arrival. This is the same style that I have previously. One of these sort of one-shot fits all component testers, except this one has got a color screen, or it's supposed to, and an IR decoder for remote control stuff. But it, it's dead and it works, just the backlight isn't there. The contrast is barely visible on the screens. Uh, Banggood is refunding me hopefully tomorrow and um, I'm gonna see what I can do.
So that didn't take long to find the problem. Right up there by my finger, the ribbon is broken. I'm assuming that's the backlight circuit. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna be able to patch that up or not. Yeah, not having much luck with this one. A fiddly thing to try and solder to actual ribbon and there's nowhere I can actually get to a terminal. So uh, I could change the whole display if I could find the right one, it'd be no problem. I think we're gonna uh, call that one a loss. Seeing as how it's free, might as well get a replacement. The good deal, uh, if I order another one, which I probably will, I get that ZIF socket, I get the processor, I get a nifty little LiPo battery, which these are super, super handy and all the extra terminals and stuff for it. So that's a pretty good deal. We can make use of all that. Crazy, it's gonna be 10 degrees tomorrow and 16 in a couple of days and all this is gonna be gone. Miserable right now though. Hot gonna be a good day in the shop. I'm gonna get some things done. I got Curious Mark going on and we're gonna try one more time to see if we can get a dangerous prototypes case for the bus pirate. I have failed miserably three times now. <laughs> Twice for sure. All right we're cutting out 32% a little over 10 milliamps maybe 12 milliamps thereabouts. We're up to about 20 C on the water temp which is pretty good. I had the heater running for quite a while before I came out out and we're hacking away at the acrylic and I triple checked to make sure the dimensions are right this time so we should have a case. Pretty happy with how things came out out here. I'd like to get another spin on the 3018 and get it up and going today but it's pretty darn cold out and I want to make some nice dinner tonight and go in and enjoy it. We still got to get this lathe moving. I've got all the parts are here for this lathe. All the new tool posts and center, live center and all kinds of things and as you can see this thing is just sweating. I'm really lucky I've waterproofed it with the WD-40 and oil. Hopefully it doesn't start to rust. We do eat, how do we do? Barely fits. Oh yeah, we did good. When they fall out like that, you know you did all right. Yeah, we're fine. There's such a tight fit, the friction's holding them in. How cool is that? That's wonderful. Just like that, we have a case. I'm pretty happy with that. I wish it would have been designed a little bit better so that I didn't have to space it to clear these headers here and the ICSP headers if I install them, but small price to pay. Uh, I think I only did minor mods to this SVG when I got it. I don't even remember where I got it, but it's in my GitHub. I might have actually designed it. I can't remember. It's been so long. Here's the bus blaster. Uh, really happy with this case. I didn't cut this one. This one came from eBay for, I believe, $9 out of Poland, which was cheaper than I probably can buy the acrylic here for. Both match set now. Cool. We're all set. Bench is coming together. We've got lots of diagnostic tools and these are fun to play with. Maybe we'll do a video upcoming. Handy tip, if you don't have any of these assortments, check them out on Amazon or eBay. You can find them as nylon standoff assortments and they come in black or white or in natural color. Uh, both are handy to have in the lab. Get yourself a few sets. They're really, really handy for a lot of different projects. Awesome job this thing does. This is a, a new filament I've never tried before. Got this from Amazon. It's a PLA plus, which means it's a little bit more durable PLA. Just beautiful. And now, 
we end up with a perfectly formed Raspberry Pi case for our software defined radio project. What we've got is the Pi 4. I've got a different SDR, the Nest Smart SDR. Coupled that to a Sawbird is a low noise amplifier and a band pass filter which blocks all the rest of the band except for the 137 megahertz that the NOAA and Meteor Weather satellites broadcast on. And this is the coupling going up to my antenna in my attic. This is working quite beautifully. We're getting images from NOAA that are better than I have ever gotten before. Meteor is looking pretty good so far. We should be in good shape for that too. this out. This is right off of the printer. No post processing at all. And this is a perfect snap fit. Unbelievable. I just love how the i3 works. Sure enough. Snap snap. <laughs> Look at that. That's as good as an injection molded piece. That is just unbelievable. So now we have some nice protection for our Pi. We don't have to buy a commercial case. And uh, honestly, I don't know that you could get one that's quite that cool. That's awesome. We'll take this and set it all back up upstairs and we'll be all good to go. And this will automatically get us new satellite images every day, all day. The Raspberry Pi actually pushes all the images to our Discord group. You can join for free and see them 24-7. Each new image comes across as I receive them, which is pretty cool. We have a feed of live imagery for the Ontario weather forecast. Neat. My Baofeng UV5R stopped charging. Uh, I just assumed it was the battery, but it's actually something going on with the charger. Let's see if we can fix it. Well, <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of investigation to find the problem. <laughs> oh, let's touch that up. <laughs> oh, that's a little funny actually can't capture it but the one on the right here is completely broken loose of the copper entirely maybe you can pick it up there yeah there you go <laughs> easy fix okay that looks a little gooder no more effect when I jiggle jiggle so we can put that back together I was flat dead from sitting there doing nothing for quite some time, so should be all set. Cool.